All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the demographic transition model. The demographic transition model, as we can see in this graphic, is set up to show where countries are in their development. Now, in theory, all countries will pass through this model at some point. And I know this model could be a little intimidating when you first look at it. But what we're going to do is break down each stage to help try to make a little bit more sense out of it so that it's not as confusing looking for you. So let's go ahead and get started and take a look at stage one. So let's go ahead and start taking a look at stage one of the demographic transition model. When we take a look at the model, we're going to see that there's a lot of little squiggly lines there that are kind of high. Well, that's showing you that the crude birth rate and crude death rates are very high in a country that's on this stage. So your crude birth rates are that you're having a lot of babies. Your crude, de crude death rates are that you're having a lot of deaths. Well, that means you're not going to have much natural increase rate or NIR. Your population is going to stay about the same even though it goes through periodic movements. When we look at stage one countries, there are very few examples that are out there. Some people classify a few sub-Saharan African countries, sometimes North Korea, but there's not necessarily one that we can use as an example. That is because these people usually kind of live off the land. Hunters and gatherers are usually ones that we include in stage one. So if you struggle to find good examples of it, that's because today's world, we don't usually classify any countries there unless maybe it's Sudan or North Korea. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at stage two of the demographic transition model. When we look at the graphic, we can immediately see that birth rates and death rates separate massively during this time. Stage two has the highest growth rate. So because of that, we're going to also see that the natural increase rate is going to start increasing at a dramatic rate. Now, one of the main reasons for this, for MDCs especially, was the uh, Industrial Revolution. In the 1700s and 1800s, we start seeing society progress. We learn better ways to be clean and to clean our cities and to take care of our bodies. And we get vaccinations and medicines. So another part of this is the medical revolution that occurs at the same time. So MDCs go through this stage about 200 years ago. We currently still have countries in this stage, mostly in Sub-Saharan Africa. Countries like the Gambia and Somalia, we still consider them in stage two, the demographic transition model. And that's what also causes uh, a little bit of a strain on the resources of that area or on the earth because they have so much population growing in those spots. All right, so let's look at stage three of the demographic transition model. When we take a look at the graphic, we can immediately see that birth rates are plummeting now and that death rates are starting to level out. So our natural increase rate is going to start going down as well. This is mainly due because of the Industrial Revolution. When people start moving into the cities to work in the factories, they begin to have less children. And there's a couple factors that play into this. Number one, children are going to start living. In the older days, you had a lot of children because a lot of them didn't make it. Now the children are surviving. Another reason is you don't need to have the children to work on the farm like in the old days. And these apartments that they're living in and houses they're living in the city are very small. So as we see urbanization set into communities and countries, we start to see their population rates start to level out a little bit more. This is the stage we want to get countries through. When we look at Sub-Saharan Africa, we're trying to get them through stage two as quickly as possible through stage three towards the end of stage three so that we can start leveling the population on earth and not put as much of a strain on its resources. Our last stage we're going to look at is stage four. So taking a look at the graphic, what we see is that the crude death rate has leveled off. Our crude birth rate has crashed down to even with it. So we have zero NIR. Most MDCs are in this stage right here, and they don't see much growth happening. Now, what we'll also sometimes see is a stage five. Now, not every textbook will have stage five. Some textbooks do, some review manuals do. But when we look at stage five, these are countries where the birth rate has gone below the death rate. So they have negative NIR. They actually have their population decreasing. Much of Europe is in this situation, especially Russia, Germany, and Italy. 
Then we also have Japan that would be included in here. So these are countries where we see a negative birth rate occurring. The reason why we don't see it officially added is some people say it's a cycle and that it will eventually change and we're going to see birth rates go up.